in the geopolitical power struggle between China, Russia and the United States. It is Europe that is being forced to continue developing its role as a global player. We need to be better prepared. I want to raise the level of our ambition. The Union faces more challenges than ever before. It clearly requires more than just military assets. The threats include cyber attacks, drug trafficking, climate change and migration control. Even space is becoming a battleground. But the biggest shortcomings are in the military field. With its strategic compass, the EU aims to make clear what it needs in order to assume its responsibility on the world stage. The Klingendal Institute is contributing to the dialogue. What long-term defense capabilities does the EU need? The EU should be more ambitious, uh, given the challenges you just mentioned. It should be able to, to execute all sorts of assignments uh, in the air, on land, uh, at sea, uh, in cyber and in space. And to do so, uh, the EU and its member states need to heavily invest in defense capabilities. And this way, the EU will be able to square its ambition with reality. A higher level of EU ambition means not distancing itself from NATO, according to the researchers. The EU can focus on operations in the South, while NATO concentrates on the East with China and particularly Russia. Greater capacity in Europe also means a stronger NATO, because 21 EU member states also belong to NATO. The NATO allies have agreed to spend no less than 2% of their GDP on defense by 2024. That means first and foremost that European countries must continue to invest in defense. But I think there's wide support within the EU as such to spend more on defense and that the NATO 2% uh, target is the criterion uh, for that. So there's no debate uh, on that. But more importantly, I think, is how the European countries are spending that money. The output that comes out of the money the European countries are spending, which is a huge amount of money, over 200 billion euros per year, is not spent in the right way because it's fragmented all across Europe. So they have to spend more together in collaborative programs, in all kinds of other cooperation models to increase the output. In an age of global competition, Europe and North America must stand strong together in NATO. The reality is that European defense resources are currently insufficient to meet the new challenges, according to the researchers. They mention shortages of personnel and equipment, but the biggest problem is a lack of political will. Uh, some countries, uh, they are reluctant to give up sovereignty because uh, defense issues are closely related to uh, the primary task of states, which is to guarantee national security. And uh, they are therefore reluctant to give that up. Uh, other countries uh, fear that further EU defense cooperation will undermine the transatlantic relationship and NATO. And yet others feel that uh, the EU is not the right format for defense cooperation because the organization is too slow and too bureaucratic. But despite the lack of political will, uh, I think it's important to mention that significant steps have been made in the past two decades because uh, initiatives like PESCO, CARD and European Defence Fund have given EU defence a serious boost. But there's still room for improvement. The question remains how realistic it is to expect higher defence ambitions across the whole of Europe. The researchers point to a gap between a lot of rhetoric and little action. But how do you bridge that gap? mainly through direct and constant involvement of heads of state, says Dick Sunday. And this has been lacking in the past, right? because often in the EU, the European Council is discussing migration, economic and financial matters, but not really consistently def discussing defence uh, issues. So that's the first thing. Secondly, we have to accept that this can only be done step by step. And uh, that's why the report argues for a realistic short-term level of ambition and a more ambitious level for the, for the longer term, which requires, third point, an enormous amount of investment and collaboration between European uh, countries. If all these three steps are taken into account, I think it is doable. And it is also doable that the European Union becomes way more ambitious in a time frame of 10, 15 years from now. To learn more about Europe's defence challenges, read the Klingendal publication The EU's Strategic Compass for Security and Defence – Squaring Ambition with Reality.